Hello, welcome to the channel where I have the facelifted, revised, improved Toyota GR Yaris. Now that is a car that we already love. It's a five-star car with ease, but they've sold so many of them that the budget is there and the will is there to make it even better. And it's not better just for fun, it's better for reliability, for those who go racing and those who go rallying and those who break their cars, like Toyota has done quite a lot. So for example, I'll talk you around the outside first. The old bumper, if you, if you nerfed a corner of it, you had to replace the whole bumper, which in a race situation could take quite a long time. So it is now in three easily changeable pieces. And at the same time, they've opened up the aperture to increase the cooling to the engine. And this mesh is now steel rather than plastic. So if somebody in a race chucked up some marbles and it hit the thing and broke it, and then the next time it would go straight through the radiator, now it does not. Largely from the outside, the body is unchanged. There are changes that you can't see which have allowed the seat to be set lower by 25 mil on the inside, but we'll come to the interior more in a moment. And then around the back, if you're following a Yaris and you think, is that the old one or is that the new one? Well, the new one doesn't have a high level stoplight anymore. That has been moved down into uh, this sort of rear section. And the reason is, is that tuners like to fit their own rear spoilers and it was messing up the, the stoplight. The reversing light was down here. That has been moved up to this as well. And that is because people who raced this car, rallied this car, drove it quite a lot, found that they were melting the reversing light. Anyway, let me talk you through some of the mechanical changes because there are a few. There is more power. There is a different automatic option as well. Um, and we'll talk you around the interior and then I'll go for a drive. The GR Yaris has been an unexpected success for Toyota, developed as a homologation special requiring it to build 25,000 cars, Toyota wasn't sure it would make it. Well, it's already built 32,000 and counting and having rallied it, raced it, crashed it, burnt it, they've identified several key areas where it could be improved. So there's quite a lot of technical detail to get through. So here we go. The body has been stiffened with 15% more spot welds and 15% more adhesive. And instead of one bolt in the upper suspension turret to locate the springs, there are now three increasing nodal stiffness in that area and the consistency of suspension response crucially. Spring rates are up by quite a lot actually. There were 36 newton per millimeter front and rear. Now they are 46 newtons per millimeter at the front and 40 newtons per millimeter at the rear. The front anti-roll bar is a little bit stiffer too but the rears is unchanged. The existing GR really turns into corners with great agility and this might enhance turn in stability. The engine makes more power too, that's up from 257 to 276 brake horsepower. Torque is up from 266 to 288 pounds-feet. Mostly that's allowed by improved cooling, but there are also lighter pistons because they've melted uh, quite a few of those actually. The compression ratio is higher too, injection and ignition software has been changed. And it's making peak power still at around 6500 RPM, but peak torque now comes in a bit later at 3300 RPM rather than 3000. The six-speed manual gearbox has been beefed up, but the big news on the transmission front is an eight-speed automatic option. This is not a twin clutch. It has a torque converter, but the lock-up clutch comes in, they say, very early. We'll try that in a minute. But there is launch control. It does 0 to 62 miles an hour, 0.3 of a second quicker than the manual, and it's quicker around Fuji Speedway by over a second a lap compared to the manual. But the honest truth is there are people who couldn't or wouldn't drive a manual GR Yaris, but who will buy an auto. Now they have that option. You still can't, unfortunately, buy one in the United States. The Yaris does not meet impact regulations and it would be too heavy if they tried to make it so. Power distribution has changed a little too. There were sport, track and normal modes. They have become normal gravel and track modes. Normal mode is 60% front biased. Gravel is 53% front biased, but most relevant to the drive today is the new track mode, which is variable from 60% of torque to the front to just 30% to the front and therefore 70% to the rear. That's the same as the old fixed sport mode was. One more thing then, inside the seats are lower. The rear view mirror is higher. There are digital dials, they are lower. Their binnacle is much lower, improving forward visibility. And you can specify red seat belts if you want. Deliveries will start in June, pricing will come in March, and given the amount of changes and how surprised Toyota has been, not by just how many GR Yaris's it has sold, but the relative wealth of the people who've bought them to accompany their supercars, I wouldn't be surprised if it is a reasonable hike more expensive than the current Yaris. And so, to the drive. Okay, so this is the GI Yaris with a, in the facelifted form with a manual transmission. I will try the automatic as well. 
It's got a terrific agility. As you turn, it just as you turn in, sort of half on the brakes, it wants to move around, which is cool. Um, I feel that I'm sitting lower. I can tell this mirror is higher. There's a better view out than there is in the, I don't know what you call it, Gen 1. Just moves around under braking sort of really nicely, really encouragingly. That's pulling out from low revs. That was at sort of 4,000 RPM, but there's a tiny bit of lag and then it winds up really willingly all the way to, all the way to seven. It's a really nice positive shift. It has changed slightly. Uh, then pro drivers found that slightly lunching the transmission cables after a few thousand kilometers. So that has been strengthened, which has also, I think, stiffened up the quality of the shift a bit. Just hangs on really gamely, even through really fast corners. The way you can throw this car around is just obscene. It is, it's so trustworthy. It's such good fun. Um, this instrument panel has been lowered, particularly here by 50 mil. So actually it's created much more space in the middle of the, of the windscreen, but also some of these switches have been repositioned because they found that while it was okay with an inertia real seat belt like this, what wasn't very helpful is that if you had a harness on, you couldn't then reach uh, various buttons. So it has come into a big sort of sweeping dashboard that is it sort of you, as you arc your arm around so you can reach all of it much more easily so i think and also some of the things were back here like this, this stability control button was all the way back here now it is right there and i have seen it flashing a little bit so i have turned it off it's very subtle anyway on a big open circuit like this when you're out on your own you can't really tell there's a power increase, but what I can tell, having driven the Gen 1 Yaris as well, is that I think this engine's a little more smooth. There's a bit less sort of whoosh to it. It sounds a little bit less artificial. It still brakes incredibly well. As so you can feel when you, because I've now got stability control off, you feel what it was doing a little bit before was just helping reduce body movements. It moves around a little bit more now, especially on the way out of that corner there. You can just feel the power shuffling itself around to sort of straighten the line ever so slightly. And this is not a, in these conditions, this is not a car, I don't think, you know, that you go massively sideways in. It's not that sort of thing. It's it's playful, it's adjustable, it moves around, but what it really wants to be doing, I say that, it's a step sideways under braking. It's got a nice bit of maneuverability on the way into a corner, and then as you get on the throttle, I think really what it wants to be doing is accelerating to give you more speed. That is a characteristic of the Gen 1 Yaris on the road. Oh, I got sorry, some understand. Sorry. That is a characteristic of the Gen 1 uh, GR on the road is that it sort of gets better the faster you go. And given it goes unbelievably fast. Oh, that's gorgeous through there. That was really nice. Sorry, that was really nice. Um, it gets better the faster you go. This car, I think, is sort of similar in that they go, it goes amazingly fast. But I do wonder if it feels better all the time as well. It's so good, it's so good. It's just sort of bouncy fun. It's a real sort of tigger of a car, you know. It's, just wants to have a laugh all the time. So that was the six speed beefed up manual GR Yaris. What of this fancy new auto? Okay, so 
welcome to the inside of the new all sing and all dancing may not sing or dance automatic version of the Yaris. You can knock it across into manual up and down like that or you can use the shift paddles. They also tell me that the drive mode, leaving it in D, is very good so you should try it. So I'll try it. Uh, we're on track so I'm going to push it into track mode which changes the power distribution front to rear. I'm also going to turn off the stability control. The SC turned off and we'll see what it's like. Well, corner one doesn't feel to me like there's any loss of um, the front rack gear shift there. Just, it, it changed up when I wanted to, it changed down when I wanted to, but it just took a moment to wake up again. Brake pedal feel is as good on this auto as it is on the manual. Come on, change down. Here we go. And it turns and it hangs on willingly and gamely. There is some roll, there is some lean. But it sort of it adopts it and then it sticks, you know, it leans into a corner and then it stays right about there, you know. It's just so poised. It never sort of runs out of ideas, it never runs out of travel. It's such a lightweight, such an agile car, that's so underrated, I think. You know, the weight is, what, 1,280 kilos, I think it's as a manual, so this will be 1,300. And the steering weight picks up as you move off centre, it sort of picks up. See what it's doing is it's changing up at the red line for me, so I grab a gear and then it's changing up again. So I need to not do that. Just doesn't fatigue either, does it? You know, that's lightweight is just the just gives you so much more. When you make a car light, you get a lot back. There is a uh, kick down point in the throttle pedal, so actually from a driver involvement perspective, I mean a manual gives you more to do anyway. But the fact that the there is a little kick down point just adds another slight sort of glitch in the in the back of your mind somehow. Oh, I almost outbreak myself with that one. I mean I loved it already. Toyota has found it is surprised by basically the success of this car. Because they had to sell 25,000 cars with this body style to homologate it for rallying. They've done like 30 odd thousand already. And in Japan, if you didn't know this, and I did not know this until yesterday, there is what they call an RS model. It's not much RS ish about it. It's got the 1.5 litre hybrid triple powertrain put into this body style because they were not sure that enough people would want a GR Yaris and they thought they'd better make up the numbers by making a sort of homologation special for the body without the fancy powertrain at a cheaper price. I'd love to have a go in one I must say but as it is they've sold 30 odd thousand it's getting these midlife revisions and they say the story will not end there the Yaris GR story will go on the difficulty will be selling it in Europe as emissions regulations increase and as more cars have to be zero emissions what do you do at that point how do you cope uh, how do they manage to get those sales into the mix along with the others along with the zero emissions cars that come with it so as this video is published it is january and the car is being shown in tokyo production starts in april of this year and deliveries will start in june of this year pricing is a it's going to be set apparently in april if you've ordered an original GR Yaris, what do you do? You try and defer and get a new one? Do you just enjoy the original? 
I don't know, in terms of fun, in terms of enjoyment, as a road car, there's not a huge amount in it. You know, there is, it's not, there aren't huge differences. There are the, you know, the fact that these, that there are now three mounting points for the front, for the front struts to stiffen it. The fact that the shell is stiffer. The fact that there's more power. Those things aren't so evident to me, even back to back on track, let alone as a road car. So I think if you've got a current one on order, just enjoy a current one, that might be all right. What these changes make is they make it a more reliable car, a more hard wearing car. A more tunable car, if you like. To that extent, they are all worthwhile, but it's great fun before. It's great fun now. This is just one of the absolute crackers of our age. Just made better and better and better. So thank you for joining me. You can find more of these vids. We're here every week or thereabouts. You can find more of the Autocart over at autocart.co.uk. There is a full written review there of this Yaris, which will have more technical details in it too. And you can find the magazine of digital subscription uh, over at themagazineshop.com, including access to our 129 year archive. And there's also a podcast called My Week in Cars, available from your favourite pod provider. Thank you very much for joining me. I would love it if you'd subscribe to this channel and like this video. I'd like it more than you know. In fact, you would make me very happy. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.